Hey guys, good morning, and we just want to thank you again for worship. If you just tuned in, man, thank you so much for being part of what we believe God has in store for you today. And so we just want to thank you for being part of what we have and what God is calling us to here at City Place Church this morning. And so, man, just happy Easter to you and to your family. Um, Today we celebrate Easter and the fact that the tomb is empty. And you're going to hear me say this a lot today, but the resurrection changed everything. The resurrection changed everything. Because of the resurrection, we know that what the cross was all about. We, at the cross, Jesus died in our place for our sins. Jesus entered into our pain and into our shame. And Jesus took the weight of evil itself so that the power of sin could be broken. And because Jesus didn't stay in the grave, we, we see that death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ in God is his love freeing us from sin, that God and his love overcoming death. And because of death and because of the resurrection, we see the love of God. And when we look at Jesus, we can say, this is love. And for the last couple weeks, we've been talking about different attributes of God and the way that he gives us strength and the way that he gives us confidence and the way that he forgives us and the way that he comforts us and in the way that he gives us peace. And we've been telling you that all of those things are ways that God loves us. But this morning, I want to talk to you today for this first part about God and his love freeing us from sin. Because see, sin is not a popular word. It's it's even actually a little bit of a confusing word. It's so I would like to tell you a story this morning for those of us with kids. Maybe if you ever been upstairs, like in our house, we have a two story house. And so sometimes we're upstairs and you you hear a loud noise from downstairs and all of a sudden you're not sure what it is and nobody asks for help and you're not sure exactly what's going on and so eventually you you work your way downstairs to to find your kids have made a gigantic mess and they're trying to clean the mess up and one of the first questions as a parent is what are you doing or why didn't you just ask for help but the reason why they didn't ask for help is because they were ashamed because they were confused They didn't respond because the answer was apparent because it's just too hard to ask for help. And it's even harder to ask to help clean up a mess of your own making. And as adults, it's it's the same for us, isn't it? We don't want to ask God for help. We want to try and fix everything on our own. We want to take matters into our own hands. We want to, and then as the mess grows and as the mess ensues, we resist to ask for help again. And because we're embarrassed, or because we're ashamed. But asking for help to resolve a mess, it means that we're at fault and nobody really wants to admit guilt and nobody really wants to admit that there's shame there or that they're at fault. And so it's an uncomfortable feeling and, and, and sorry is an uncomfortable word. And so we would rather deny it, ignore it, and sweep it under the rug and hope that it just all goes away. But yet it won't go away. That feeling that we've fallen short and and that we failed eats away at us. See, when we fall short of, of what God has created us to be, it's because it's what the Bible calls sin. Sin is a rebellion, a turning away from God, a decision to move against Him or independent of Him. Sin is a transgression. It's a crossing of lines and boundaries. It's a violation of another person. And ultimately, sin is a power. Sin with a capital S that holds us captive and paralyzes us with shame. Taking all of it together, you realize that sin is a dead end and it's, it's a grand game over. But so what do we do now? See, there was a follower of Jesus who had fallen short in a spectacular way. In fact, his failure was so dramatic and his failure was so epic that his story should have ended there. His name was Peter. Many of you are familiar with Peter and his story, and some of you are hearing that name for the first time this morning. But Peter was, wasn't just one of Jesus' followers. He wasn't just one of Jesus' disciples. He was one of Jesus' closest friends. And his sin wasn't just a crossing of the line or this minor de- departure or this coming up a little bit short his sin was a flat out denial of Jesus not once not twice but three 
times. And so as you look at Peter's story, and you understand that Jesus told him beforehand that you were going to deny me three times, Peter. And Peter's like, no, never. I would never do such a thing. There's no way that I would do that, Lord. And when it came time for Jesus to be arrested and for Jesus to be being led away for his trial, Peter's confronted in three different times and three different times he denies them. And after Jesus' crucifixion, Peter goes back to doing what he always does what, or what he did beforehand. When Jesus is resurrected on Easter Sunday and Mary shows at the tomb and Jesus talks to her and the tomb is empty, she runs back to the disciples and Peter and John come running to the grave to see that Jesus is gone. Jesus later appears to his disciples and and tells them that he's going to give them the Holy Spirit. But even through all of that, Peter just goes back to what Peter knows and Peter just goes back to fishing. Imagine what could have been going through Peter's mind during this time. The shame that he felt, the embarrassment that he felt, and and even though he and his friends around him, I, I wonder if he still just kind of felt alone because of the weight of the fact that he denied Jesus. He was ashamed. And see, that's what shame does. Shame isolates us. It tells us that we're the only ones. It's it's that our sin is uniquely disqualifying to us, that no one else has ever done anything quite like this. It makes your exception or it makes the exception in the worst way that you are the one person who can't be forgiven. You are the one person because of what you've done that this will never be able to be set right in God's eyes, that you have gone past the point of return. You have fallen too far. Shame tells us that it's game over, the end. And in a sense, it's true because sin is a dead end. Or as the Bible puts it in Romans 6.23, it tells us that the wages of sin is death. And see, shame, that same kind of, that, that, that kind that comes from actual guilt, it's not a liar. It just tells us the story as it stands without Jesus. But see, then Jesus shows up one day after his resurrection and after he appeared to the disciples in the upper room, Peter and his buddies and the other disciples that have gone back fishing. And Jesus shows up that day in the middle of Peter's fishing trip. And in the book of John, which we've been reading this these last few weeks through our 21 days of prayer and fasting in John chapter 21, which we would have read this weekend in John chapter 21, verses four through seven, it tells us this. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore and yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to them, children, do you have any fish? And they answered him, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it and now they were not able to haul it in because the quantity of fish. The disciple who Jesus loved, who was John, by the way, says says to Peter, it is the Lord. And when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment and he for he was stripped for work and he threw himself into the sea and he swims to the shore. And see, what I love about this moment is that Jesus meets Peter right where he's at. Peter tries to retreat. He tries to go back to what he knows, back to fishing. He goes back to his old ways. He goes back to a familiar place, to his comfort zone. But Jesus goes exactly to that place to meet him. See, Jesus didn't just meet Peter there. Jesus reenacted the scene from Peter's first calling. It was like Peter, or it was like he was taking Peter back to the start, back to where it all began. Because if you're familiar with the story, when Jesus first called the disciples, he was walking along the shore where Peter was fishing. And he tells Peter in that moment, follow me and I will make you a fisherman of men, or a fisher of men. But this time, it wasn't about the person Peter It was about this idea of, Peter, do you love me? And as Peter swims to the shore and he climbs up onto the the beach and he begins there, Jesus has breakfast prepared and there's a campfire with fish and things. And Jesus and Peter and the other disciples sit down to have breakfast together. Peter or Jesus asks Peter three times, do you love me? Do you love me? 
Do you love me? Three times Jesus asked Peter this question about his love. And there's a whole sermon in there, but for today I want you to see is this. That when we retreat in shame, that when we retreat in shame, Jesus comes after us again and again and again. His love will never stop chasing us. His love will never let go of us. His love can change everything. And see, the risen Jesus that we celebrate today on Easter, the risen Jesus breathes new life. He, the life of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, He shares it with His followers. He announces His true, that that true peace is theirs. And he shares with us and and that this peace can be ours too. No more fear, no more shame, no more guilt, just true peace. The true and deep sense of being put back together again and being set right and being set right with God and being set right with one another. See, and then Jesus sends his disciples into the world to share the good news And the good news is for the world. Think of it. Our sins, our missing the mark, our falling short, our transgressing, our crossing the lines are all forgiven because of what Jesus did on the cross and the fact that he was raised from the grave. And the power of sin that keeps us bound, that paralyzes us, that held us in the same patterns of failure over and over and over again, all of that is now broken because of the work that Jesus did on the cross and because of the fact that he is now resurrected from the grave. To be forgiven is to be free, free from guilt, free from shame, free from the power that has enslaved us for so long. And free to be fully human. To be what God made us to be. To reflect God's image. To reflect His wisdom. And to reflect His love into the world. See, that day on the beach, when Jesus began to ask Peter, Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Peter's life changed that day. He went on to lead the start of a movement that would later be called the church. And it began that day that Jesus found him on the shore and restored him. And church, friends, your life can be changed today too. The whole path of your life can change today. Maybe you thought that it was game over, that you had hit a dead end, and because of a a mistake that you've made or a destructive habit that you've been caught in, but I've got good news for you today. It's not over. And just as it wasn't over when Jesus died on the cross and was buried, it's not over for you because Jesus carried our sins upon him onto the cross. And because God raised Jesus from dead in victory over sin and over death, it's not over. Sin is not the end. The resurrection changed everything. The scriptures tell us that God shows his love for us because while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5.8 But before we knew how to call his name, Before we knew how to pray, before we knew how to ask God for anything, God came running after us. And God comes running after you, just like he came after Peter. Today can be your day. This love that was exhibited to us on the cross, this love that was exhibited to us when Jesus raised himself from the dead, This love, it can change everything because the resurrection changed everything. And so this morning, as you sit here in your homes and you watch this on a computer or you watch this on your phone or wherever you may be this morning, I want you to know that there's no shame and there's no guilt because Jesus died for all of that. And so don't allow the sin that maybe you have in your life to hold you back from what could be the most amazing thing you've ever experienced, 
which is a relationship with Jesus. And so this morning, as you sit wherever you sit or stand wherever you stand, if you need a relationship with Jesus this morning, I just want you to, to repeat this prayer after me. And it's this simple. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Thank you for the work that you've done on the cross. Thank you that you have come back to life. Lord, I know that I am a sinner and I'm asking you to forgive me. I love you. I praise you. But Jesus, here is my life. Jesus, here is my life. And if that's your prayer this morning, we would love to be able to follow back up with you with the decision that you just made. And so I'm going to give you my email address. It's Kevin at cityplace.church. Kevin at cityplace.church. Would you please just send me an email and let me know about the decision that you made today to follow after Jesus so that I can follow up with you so that our church can come alongside and help you take the next steps that you need to take. Or maybe you sit here this morning and you're a follower of Jesus, but maybe your life hasn't been going the way that you want it to. Maybe you're not living the way that you need to live. And maybe you just need to come home like the story of the prodigal son. I want you to know that the Father loves you. I want you to know that He's here for you. And I want you to know that He has a plan for you. And so this morning, whatever it is that you need from Jesus, He is your peace. He is your love. He is your power. He is your joy. He is your hope. And he loves you. And everything that he did on the cross and everything that happened three days later when he stepped out of a grave was because he loved you. And so we love you. Thank you for joining us this morning. Let me pray for us. And then we're going to move to the next parts of our service. Father, we love you. Lord, thank you for the work on the cross. Thank you for the fact, Lord, that three days later you came back to life. And Lord, that's the significant turning point for everything that we believe as followers of Jesus, Lord, that you stepped out of a grave one day, that you gave life so that we could have life. And so, Father, I just pray this morning, Father, that if there's anybody that's watching this, Lord, that needs a relationship with you, Father, I pray, Lord, that today would be their day, that they would have said that prayer and that they'll send the follow-up email so that we can circle back with them. But Father, if there's people, Lord, followers of you, Lord, that have faded away and maybe need to come back to a relationship with you, Lord, I pray that you bring them home. Or Father, maybe if we're just struggling this morning, Lord, I pray that we would turn to you and you only. And so Father, thank you for Easter. Thank you for what it means. Thank you for all that you've done. And we love you and we praise you. And it's in your holy name we pray. Amen.